So in a previous video, what we did is we went through and we found the reactions at this frame. We found the reactions at the pins and also the internal pin C. So if you want to take a look at that, click on the link in the comments or description below. But what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and we want to find the maximum shear and maximum moment by constructing the shear moment diagrams, right? So here are those forces that we had come up with, right? We found the reactions at um, AY, EY, you know, CY, CX. We found all these reactions. And what we're going to do is I'm going to set this up where we're going to just draw more diagrams on another page here for the shear moment. So let's go down to that. And the diagrams that I drew in here look like this, right? Where we have the loads, I transferred all the loads that we found in that previous problem up here, right? So we have AX, AY, EX, EY, right? We have our given applied loads. And what we want to do now is we want to go right ahead and draw the shear and moment diagrams. So before we do anything else, we need to make sure we do a couple things. First, we want to define our local axes, right? And that's going to tell us which side is the top and which side is the bottom of the beam. And that'll help us as we understand tension and compression, right? So when we do that, what I like to do is I like to look for a way, well, is there a way to keep X all going in the same direction? So for example, if we start, you know, down in this corner, can we keep going all the way around the structure to keep X always pointing in the, in the same direction? The answer is yes. So that's how I want to define my local axes. All right, so I'm going to take my local axes. I'm going to draw them here. I'm going to draw them here and I'm going to draw them here, okay? So our local x-axis is always going to be following the axis of the member and it's going to go around in a in sort of a circle here where the top, you know, is on this side, it's always on the outside, the bottom is always on the inside. So the top is on the top of the horizontal member, the inside, but here the top is on the outside and the bottom is on the inside. Okay, so the bottom's always on the inside, the top is always on the outside. That's a great way to define your local axes. The second thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to just write down my my sign convention. So write down my sign convention. In, in particular, I want my internal sign convention. So what does that look like? Well, that tells us if we have a top of a beam here, right? What that means is a positive moment is going to look like this, right? A positive shear is going to look like this. And a positive moment causes tension on the bottom, compression on the top, right? Similarly, what we would know here is a positive moment is going to look like this. Tension on the bottom, compression on the top. We're going to have our shear, uh, likewise, and then even over here, we could even do the same thing where we say we define our positive tension on the bottom, compression on the top. And you might say that from the right side to the left side, it looks different. And you're right, it does. And that's because as we define our local axes, you'll notice Y is to the left for this member, Y is to the right for this member. So when we do that, we have to we have to rotate our internal signs as well. So these tell us, you know, what the what the shear moment means. And, and I had a student ask me, well, why do we care? That's such a good question. We care because this helps us to design the beam. When we know what the moment is, when we know where that tension and compression are, we can really design the beam to accommodate the, the stresses that are result because of it, right? That's how we size our beams, all right? So what we want to do is once we know that, then we can just get started, right? Because when we get started, we know that our shear is going to start, you know, at zero, but immediately because we have a force at AX, it's going to drop. So it's going to start here and it's come, going to come down to oh, 1.575. So I'm going to come down to, you know, let's put it here. And this is going to be minus 1.5 seven five kilonewtons. I already have my units up here. And the reason it's minus is because our positive Y, our local Y, is going to the left. When this force pushes us opposite of that, it's going to go minus. All right. And the cool thing is there's no other forces on this member. So that 1.75 negative is just going to come all the way up to the top. So let's draw that in. And then I'll shade that into and that's the shear diagram for AB. All right. The next stop we want to go is is over here for for um, for BCD, right? And the thing to think about is, well, what happens with the shear? Well, this horizontal force does not cause a shear in the top member, right? What does cause a shear though is this 7.75, right? This 7.75 is going to push up on the member, and then it's going to come over, and the nine kilonewtons is going to push it down, right? So we have to come back to our, our our shearing force in this member. That shearing force is going to be the 7.75. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to 7.75. Right, so I'm going to label this 7.75 kilonewtons, and I'm going to go all the way up to there, and that's going to be a positive value, right? As we know our local axes, we're going up 
7.75 and then we're going to come over till we hit the nine kilonewtons over here and we're going to go straight down so let's draw those lines in and what that does is it brings me down to a value here of minus 1.25 kilonewtons okay so that's our value at this point all right and then what we know is this is going to come over there's no change in load from nine kilonewtons to the pin so let's go there and then the next question is what happens at the pin okay so pause the video think about it for a minute what happens at the pin is if you remember our internal force here at the pin we had a force at the pin and a force down at the pin we never really found this force on the right hand side but the force you know on the pin here was 1.25 Okay, so what happens is we essentially kind of go up to the pin, but then come straight back down uh, to the same point. And, and really, when we go through a pin, there's no change in shear unless there's a force at that, you know, an external force. The internal force doesn't change the shear diagram. So what happens is we'll continue this line straight across. And then what we can do is we can close this back to zero. Okay, so we, we can see there EY is going to kind of push that back up to zero. Okay, so that becomes our shear and we can fill that in. So now we'll come to our last member here and we have to kind of remember that we have this minus 1.575 going on here, right? And what's going to happen is that's going to cause right if we know that we have 1.575 at this point we're gonna need to have an internal force of 1.575 that way so what's gonna happen to this member is is we're gonna have to have an equal and opposite force there so to balance this one we're gonna need an equal and opposite force going this way and that's gonna cause our shear to start by going up to 1.5 five seven five that's going to be positive because our up value is positive okay and then we're going to come straight down to our three kilonewtons and when we get to three kilonewtons that's going to push us to the left three kilonewtons down to a value of 1.47 or 425 and then there's no change in load so we're going to come straight back until we hit you know the hit the um, hit point e here and that's going to be at minus 1.425 kilonewtons so we have our shear diagram and then we can shade that in and next we want to go and solve for the moment diagram and again when we do a moment diagram i like to label these areas right so we have a1 we're gonna have a2 i'm gonna break our pin up into a3 and a4 because what we want to see is the moment go back to zero at this point and then i'm going to make this a5 and this a6 so a lot of areas but they're easy to find because they're all just rectangles right so to find my areas i'm going to make a little bit more room here and i'm just going to drag this up so when we find our areas we get a1 equal to a minus 1.575 kilonewtons times this distance here which is 10 meters and that is easy to do in your head but minus 15.75 kilonewton meters a2 likewise we have a height of 7.75 kilonewtons times our distance here and this distance is going to be three meters and when we do that out we get 7.75 times 3 meters equals 23.25 kilonewton meters all right a3 well this distance here is going to be 6 meters and what do we get we get minus 1.25 kilonewtons times 6 meters and that equals minus 7.5 kilonewton meters a4 likewise it has a height of minus 1.25 kilonewtons the remainder of our distance here is three meters right this distance here is three meters and what we get here is that equal to minus 3.75 kilonewton meters our last two areas a5 equals well the height of 1.575 kilonewtons times a distance here this distance is six meters and the last distance is four meters so a5 times six meters equals 9.45 kilonewton meters and lastly we have a6 which equals minus 1.425 kilonewtons times four meters which equals minus 5.7 kilonewton meters all right so those are our areas and as we go through all right what we're going to do is we're going to find our moments right we know that the moment at this starting point at point a is going to be zero because that 
is zero. It's, it's how a pin is defined. There's zero re resistance to curvature at that point. right? We don't have an applied moment there, so it's going to start at zero. So we're going to say the moment at this first point, and, and what we'll do is we'll call this kind of like a point one or point zero. Okay, the moment at point zero is going to equal zero. Okay, so that's an easy one to start with. Okay, well then I'm just going to go ahead and label the rest of the, these points. It's going to be point one. This is still point one. Then we're going to come here to our point load, which is going to be you know, this is going to be two, then we're going to have a point here, which is going to be three, point here, which is going to be four, this is still four, and then we're going to have a, another point at our point load, which will be the moment at five, and then lastly, the moment at six. All right, so we're going to go ahead and find all these moments, but as we do, all that we're going to do is we're going to take the moment, the previous moment, and add the next area to it. So what does this look like? Well, M1 is just going to be zero plus, you know, minus 15.75 kilonewton meters, right? So what that works out is just, you know, minus 15.75 kilonewton meters. Okay, so we start at zero, but all of a sudden we go to minus 15 point, you know, 75 kilonewton meters. So I'm just gonna come up to here and draw that in. And then I like to label these points as well. So this is gonna be minus 15.75 kilonewton meters. Okay, and I can shade that in. And it's a negative moment. So the negative moment means we have, instead of, um, you know, tension on the bottom, compression on the, on, the, on the top, we have tension on the top, compression on the bottom. All right, as we turn the corner here, since, our, since, since what we said was our sign convention, our local axes were gonna give us the top on the same side. And when we turn the corner, we know we're gonna start with minus 15.75 here and then keep going. So let's go ahead and do that. So as we turn the corner, we're gonna say that M2 now equals, well, what? M1 plus A2. So when we do this out, minus 15 point, you know, 15.75 kilonewton meters plus 23.25 kilonewton meters is going to equal 7.5 kilonewton meters. So we know that at this point we're going to come down to minus 15.75, right? But by point two we're going to have jumped up to 7.5. Okay, so we're gonna just connect that, and that's where we go. So this point here is gonna be 7.5. Okay, so we go from minus 15.75 all the way up to 7.5, okay? And then at M3, what we're hoping, by the time we come back to M3, we're gonna to go to zero, so let's look at that. This is gonna be M2 plus A3, and what do we get? Well, it's just 7.5 kilonewton meters you know, minus 7.5 kilonewton meters, right? We get the, the A3 here is minus 7.5. So the good news is that comes back to zero at our pin, which is what we was, were hoping for. Okay, and if we continue on, let's go to M4. M4 is gonna equal M3, you know, plus uh, A4. And A4 here is gonna be minus 3.75. So, you know, if we have zero, minus 3.75 kilonewton meters we get down to minus 3.75 kilonewton meters, right? Okay, so I'm gonna draw that line in here and label this value at minus 3.75 kilonewton meters. Okay, so then what we wanna do is we wanna to come to, we wanna turn the corner. And again, since our top stays consistent, our x-axis, the direction of that stays consistent, we know that we're gonna start here at you know, minus 3.75, Right, and from there we're gonna to go to 0.5. So let's find the moment at 0.5. It's gonna equal the moment at 0.4 plus A5. And what's that? Well, minus 3.75 kilonewton meters, you know, plus 9.45 kilonewton meters. It's gonna bring us to 5.7 kilonewton meters. And if you're looking ahead, that's a good thing, right? Because what we have here is minus 5.7. So I'm just gonna do this one real quick because it's an easy one to do. You know, if M5 plus A6 equals, well, what? We have 5.7 kilonewton meters minus 5.7 kilonewton meters. And by the time we get back to 0.6 here, we're back to zero kilonewton meters. And that's a good thing. So we start at minus 3.75 at this point four. At 0.5, we come up to 5.7. And then we come back to zero. So let's draw those lines in and then shade it in. And lastly, what we need to do is identify the points of maximum shear 
and maximum moment. So if we take a look at our diagrams, right, what we want to do is look for the extremes. And, and here we see, well, the, the biggest value, right, of shear is going to be up at this at this location. We have 7.75 kilonewtons, right? All the rest of them are, are less, but at this location, we have a critical point of shear. So we could write that down in, in our solution here. Well, our Vmax equals 7.75 kilonewtons. Similarly, our maximum moment we can identify from the diagram. So we can look across the diagram, we can see, well, 15.75, you know, 3.75, 7.5, 3.75, 5.7. And we're not looking necessarily just for uh, the, the maximum positive value. We want to know, well, okay, 7.5 is the maximum positive value, but minus 15.75 is the maximum negative value. And, and typically what we want to know is when we're designing this frame, what that value is so we can pick a beam or design a beam strong enough, right? So the maximum, neg maximum maybe we can put negative moment, this is the maximum the overall moment, minus 15.75 kilonewton meters and we could also write here the maximum positive moment is going to equal to 7.5 kilonewton meters so there we have it we went through and we solved for all our, our maximum um, shear our maximum moment and we're good all right so again to do that what we wanted to do here or what we did do is we solved well we first came down after we did the reactions we defined our local coordinate systems right we wrote those down um, we we wrote down our internal sign convention and then lastly right step three we constructed our shear and moment diagrams so I hope this example helps you, and you know if you have any comments, feel free to drop them below. But otherwise, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.